Okay, it's money. Shout out to Brooklyn. You requested this. Uh, before I start off, this is one hell of a dog. Although it is, it was not bred for fighting. Uh, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So let's start off. Uh, it's the. Pedro de Presa Canario, a.k.a. the Canary Mastiff, a.k.a. the Canary Catchdog, a.k.a. Presa Canario, a.k.a. Dojo Canario, which is uh, uh, similar to our favorite dog. The Dojo Argentinian or the Argentinian Mastiff. I'm sure me and you share that as a uh, favorite there. Um, these dogs are very expensive. They originate in the Canary Islands. Uh, now, they, they weren't bred for fighting, but they were bred for hunting wild dogs. Um... It is a working dog, of course, and it's a it's a molosser type dog. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They're uh, similar to lar the very large mastiffs. Um, from what I hear, it is one hell of a guard dog. Uh, and we're gonna get into the temperament right now. Uh, it requires early socialization and obedience training um, and I stress early because this dog is a motherfucking beast I mean the, the size they can weigh 150 pounds uh, see, seeing them 4 foot tall uh, 160, 170 pounds is not unheard of. Um, they can hunt uh, small cats to large cats, uh, medium-sized lions, believe it or not. Uh, but they're mostly used for killing wild dogs in the Canary Islands. And in parts of Africa, wild dogs are, are a nuisance and very dangerous to uh, tribes and and people living in basically in wilderness conditions. Not wilderness, but uh, like African plains, things like that. This dog will protect you from cats. Uh, like I said, other wild dogs, which run off with kids and uh also it protects um it protects livestock but at the same time it can kill livestock and i stress that it requires early socialization because like i said it can turn into a beast on you real quick this dog is not for everybody uh i would not recommend getting it if you live in a city i would not recommend getting this dog um like you would own a dojo argentinian for example this dog takes some um, a special owner because it really it, obedience is the key with this dog it's so goddamn big if you're walking it it walks you so you you can't stress enough how dangerous this dog is uh So, now the history is just amazing on how old this dog is. Uh, let me see here, excuse me, because I do have notes on this dog, uh, because it, it isn't in any of my fighting books. So, let's talk about their history as a catch dog. Uh... And we know catch dogs are boar hunters, um, but in this 
In this instance, they're specifically catch dog. They catch dogs. Uh, we're talking about wild dogs here in Spain. Uh, so, and please, if, you, if you're using a dog for uh, a catch dog, please put neck protection on the dog. Because if they're going after wild boars, it's only a matter of time before the boar pierces your pit bull's neck. Or mostly American bullies, or I don't know what the hell I see these dogs that are um, attacking boars. And please stop the bullshit. There is no blue pit bull. Okay? And I'm not even going to get into... American bullies being registered under the American pit bull on this video because this isn't for that but uh if you know your dogs you you know what a real pit bull looks like and I'm gonna leave it at that so this this dog is looked at as a savior I mean it goes back to the sixteen hundreds this dog does so I mean, god damn, it has a it has a history. And the history goes from through everything. Uh now this is a special on dog fighting, so let me get to where I found out it started fighting, which was um the dog started fighting around the 1700s and on the Canary Island, they claim that they stopped fighting them in 1941. Now, in 1941, the fights between these dogs were to handle disputes. Uh, just about every every couple people own these type of dogs. So, um, it would be my dog versus your dog to settle a dispute, a farming dispute, uh, um any kind of dispute it was uh, the the dogs did the fighting uh similar to humans in bare knuckle fighting over in uh gypsies or in ireland you know they just they just settle it with their fist so now i can't find where the dog got so many names uh I'm only reading about the history in the Canary Islands, so I don't know how it got um, the dojo in it and stuff like that. Uh, now, let me share something personal. Uh, I have a very bad experience with this dog. Somehow, one of them ended up in Baltimore, Maryland, as... And it ended up at my neighbor's. Uh, luckily, it was behind a penitentiary fence because I myself own a highly aggressive dog that don't take no bullshit from other dogs. But this dog was so damn big and so camouflaged. He was a black brindle, but not the type of brindle that you would see in a pit bull. Um... I urge you to look at the images of the dogs, and the brindle is a, is a different kind. It's more of a tiger stripe. Um, the the stripes are more defined than on a pit bull. And I see you already have a knowledge of what dogs it took to make this beast. Um. So. Right, they, what happened was the incident I had was uh, I was coming down the street. I wasn't aware that this dog was in the neighborhood at the time that the neighbor had just moved in. And I noticed that he had a large uh, white, what appeared to be a white pit bull, but it, but it was too large to be a pit bull. I imagine it had American Bulldog in it or uh, something like my dog, maybe the Dojo Argentinian. And here I am walking along, and out of nowhere, I hear some rustling in the gravel. 
and I look over and see this monster staring me down. And I made the mistake of looking eyes with it. And just like the Japanese Tulsa, uh, I stated that the Japanese Tulsa, if you're not its owner and you lock eyes with it, it's on. It's on. It can be fatal. If you stare eyes with that dog, it takes it as a serious challenge to its, a challenge to, um, it takes it as a threat on its life. And it'll go for broke. But the Presa Canario can be standing for, for as large as it is, it can be standing right there and you won't even know it. I mean, I was shocked. So the dog is just completely still and I'm completely still because I don't want to move. And I'm aware that this dog can bust right through the pathetic fucking fence that was holding it up. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I start moving. The dog starts coming after me. The owner comes out the house with a goddamn bat like that was going to do anything. You could break a bat over this dog's goddamn head. And I'm telling you, it'll co still come for more. I truly believe that. And, uh... So anyways, I'm, I'm not scared to say I ran for my life. And it wasn't long after that that every time I came by that dog, I had my Glock 19 on me. And I'm not talking about the new one in Maryland that only holds 10 rounds. My Glock 19 had a Glock 17 clip in it. So I was carrying at least 17, one in the ch at least 16, one in the chamber. My bad. Uh, one more thing about these dogs, like I said, I would not, I would never recommend owning one of these. They're just a beast and a, a problem to keep up. They have a list of health problems. Mainly, they do suffer from dysplasia. Uh, never get one of these dogs without having the hips x-rayed. Uh, the, the 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 disease they have and many times cripples them uh hip dysplasia is a genetic problem so and and it is a problem that runs rampant in this breed this is jr the boxing junkie and this one was for uh money a little history on the dog a little knowledge on the dog uh so, peace out.